one for question number two. Yeah, if you kill the mic so one can't make a follow-up comment. I just hope they do it to me. <laughs> yeah. This question is for Mr. Common. At the last AGM, Mr. Caulfield asked a question on my behalf. In that answer, he explained, we do create deposits in the system. We expand money supply when we lend money. Your statement clearly confirms that banks are not revenue constrained. Rather, they are capital constrained. Put another way, bank lending is limited by regulated capital requirements rather than 100% external deposit, deposits and borrowing, as is the public perception. The ACCC, in their determination regarding the takeover of Suncorp by ANZ, stated the ACCC considers that coordination is most likely to involve the major banks engaging in either expressly or tacitly in a live and let live style of conduct or pattern of behaviour to achieve soft or muted price or non-price competition sufficient to either maintain and or protect their existing market shares and or not challenge the status quo, end of quote. There are a lot of bank customers that are struggling with loan and mortgage repayments as a consequence of the banking oligopoly's synchronised increase in, of the interest rate in line with the RBA cash rate. I'm not suggesting that the cash rate does not impact on, some, on existing loans and mortgages, nor am I suggesting that the bank does not leverage these facilities downstream of the primary transaction, but that should not be the burden of the primary borrower. It should be on the bank. Notwithstanding, it is promoted by mainstream media that raising the RBA overnight cash rate impacts 100% on the balance of a loan and or mortgage. My question is, with your comment, we also do create deposits in the system. We expand money supply when we lend money, front of mind. How would the CBA justify increasing the interest rate in line with the RBA overnight cash rate on 100% of the balance of loans and mortgages that are based on a created deposit? Now, when answering, Mr Common, unlike Mr Narev, I'm not asking you to temper your sense of justice. I'm requesting that you temper your desire to engage the fog of banking Instead, focus on the primary transaction. Thank you, Mr Sanderson. And I guess I'll determine who answers the questions that are put to the meeting today. But I picked up a couple of themes for your question, but I'm going to try and simplify it. The role of the bank is firstly, as you mentioned, to ensure that we have a very strong balance sheet. Without a strong balance sheet, we cannot support the Australian economy. The balance sheet comes in predominantly two main parts. The deposits, which we have to actively compete for from our customers to provide either a transaction banking service that meets their needs or a term deposit or other savings product from which they can get a return. And I will note as the interest rates have gone up over the last couple of years or last year or so, our returns to deposit holders has increased by five times and on deposit term deposit rates at a rate greater than mortgage rates. The other side of the balance sheet is we have to borrow from offshore. If we cannot borrow from offshore and if we can't, cannot effectively compete for deposits, then we cannot lend into the Australian economy and support consumers and businesses to actually drive economic growth. That may well increase money supply, but it is the role of a bank. The bank is to have a strong balance sheet, to compete for deposits, to source capital from overseas, and then to lend money to customers to support them.
That is what we as a board are focused on through all our committees to make sure we get that right. And um, we're trying to do the best we can at that at the moment. I might pause there and move on to another question. Thank you, Mr. Sanderson. Feel free to come back to the mic, but that was quite a long question. I think we need to give some other people an opportunity.